that uh, occurred in September the 23rd, uh, 1996. And uh, a major story, very briefly what happened was that uh, the mother and uh, her son and a family friend, another female friend, had left uh, their house to drive into a small village called Fruki in Fife to get a jar of coffee. They had run out of coffee and the journey wasn't that long. Now that area, again in question Chris, is all farmland, it's fields and it's forests. It's very rural. Very, very rural, yeah. And uh, it's not a built up area in any manner or means, uh, apart from the small village of Fruki. And they were driving down there, it was late at night, um, and uh, as they were driving down the road, they became aware of this black, triangular shaped object hovering in the sky. Now what happened next was like something out of a Steven Spielberg movie and I know this, it yeah. sounds so bizarre. Yeah. They claim that this object then emitted three columns of tubular white light from the underside of this object and it was like a spiral dance if you like of three tubular lights moving onto the road surface. And they're looking at this and they cannot believe what they're seeing. Mm. And then suddenly, the, this tri triangular shaped craft tilted slowly and you could see a dome shaped part on, on the top of it, on the top surface. And then seconds later, this object just screamed off into the sky and was gone in a matter of seconds. It left the witnesses confused, alarmed, frightened, a whole range of emotions went through their, through their being and they just didn't know what they had seen. And they were in the car? They were in the car and they, didn't, they hadn't stopped the car on this particular point of the story. So that object was away. They went to the village of Fruki. They bought uh, a jar of coffee and they just happened to buy, I know this sounds bizarre, they actually happened to buy a UFO magazine, mm. which actually that's the title of it, UFO magazine by Graham Birdsell. Uh, yes, it's uh, the British UFO magazine, not the American. That's magazine. correct, yeah, yeah. Qu Quest International. Yeah. And uh, they bought that because th obviously they had seen something bizarre. So when they left the shop on their way back to their house, they saw the same or similar object again. What happened was this object raced from a vantage point in the sky, mm -hmm. screamed over their car, and the young son who was, who was in the car actually felt it, it was going to crash into the car. And he became very alarmed, he started to cry, and it, it didn't, it just screamed over the car and went away. So they went to the house and they said to the young daughter, there was, the, the, there was a teenage daughter there who belonged to the other woman who was in the car. As I said, there was two women in the car and a young son. Yeah. They came back and they said to the daughter who was in the house, you'll never guess what we just saw. What was that? A UFO? And, and this daughter refused to believe them. So the daughter says, okay, let me come back out with you. And if that object is still in the sky, then I'll see it myself. So she came into the car and on the way back in between where the sighting was, they saw a range of trees just down slightly off the road, down farmers fields, a grouped range of trees and coming up from these trees were columns of light. It was like a Second World War searchlight, you know, mm -hmm. the, the searchlights that used to illuminate the, the, the German bombers. Yeah. Red, green, blue lights, tubular lights coming up from this forest. Now they lived in this area, they knew that this was something strange, this was something different, this was something which was not generally there. What could this be? Mm. And they're looking at this. So they decided to get a little bit closer. So they came off the main road and went down this, this other road, this small, smaller road, which took them along towards this banked range of trees. And then things began to get bizarre. They claim they saw, sounds crazy, they claim they saw as like a blue mist in front of the trees, in front of the trees, a blue mist, contained within this mist were, she said hundreds, she never said 7, 10, 15, 20, she said it was like hundreds of small grey beings who were carrying what appeared to be like cylinders or cubes towards a larger object just nestling further back in the wooded clearing. There was this large object, there was a hell of a lot of activity going on, and they, were, and they couldn't believe this. And at one point, the daughter was in the car, and she's looking at this, she, she just couldn't believe it, and they be began to become very, very alarmed. 
At this point, they decided enough was enough. They, they had seen enough. This was something out of the twilight zone. They had to get away. Yes. And they quickly put the car into gear. And just before we screamed away from that, that point, there was a tremendous blue flash illuminated the whole area. A massive blue flash. And they, they went away. They went back to, the, to their house, shaken. They couldn't believe what they saw. And um, they managed to get a pair of binoculars. I know this sounds bizarre, and, 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 and you know, but this is what they got a pair of binoculars. They wanted to go back, and they went back. Rather than stay frightened, they had to go back. They had seen something strange. Yes. They had to go back for more. Was it still there? Let, let's have a look at this. So on their way back, the whole area and on the fields was lit up. It was like a myriad of tiny stars just hanging down all over the fields. It was like a crazy effect. That's what they said. All this effect was all over the fields, and they stopped the car again. The same activity was taking place. Things changed. Things happened. Now, what they saw then, Chris, was that they claim that in some blue bubbles, mm -hmm. they like were spheres. like spheres. Yes, there were one to two of these grey beings standing motionless in these spheres and being propelled or blown across this farmer's field towards their direction. And at this point, the daughter turned and looked at the side of the car and she said there was a small grey being standing at the car looking in. That was enough. They just back in the car and they just screamed back, at, you know, back to their house. Now this is a big story and other events transpired that uh, on one occasion the young son, this is weeks later, the young son claimed he was playing in his bedroom and he, he looked out of his bedroom window, this is what he claimed, and he saw this grey being just floating outside this, this window. On another occasion, the mother had uh, run a bath for her son. He was upstairs, she had run a bath, and she was down the stair on the phone. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly she heard, Mom, Mom, come quick, come quick, come quick. She threw the phone down, bounded up the stairs, rushed into the, the, the bathroom and says, What's the matter? And the young, her son was uncontrollably crying, sobbing, and he said he saw a small grey being standing next to the bath. He had just appeared next to the bath. Now the difference, Chris, the difference with this case is this being had a, a jagged row of teeth. Now as a researcher yourself, I'm sure you're well aware of these grey creatures. They yes. generally don't have that. No, they don't. They usually have very, very, um, you know, unmoving, very, yes. very narrow slits. That's correct. And this is why this was bizarre. And I, I began to think maybe maybe this can't be true until a, a colleague of mine in Scotland gave me some uh, press clippings from Mexico and also uh, Puerto Rico yes. in which greys have been seen and these accounts had the jagged teeth. Now, I don't suppose this young son's reading newspapers from Puerto Rico to get that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that farmhouse where this couple lived had seen a lot of UFO activity. On one occasion, the mother was looking out. It's like a valley. She was looking out the top bedroom window, just looking out, just looking at the rolling fields. And then suddenly, she heard a droning noise, looked up, and it was like a massive thing, like something out like of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. A big object just slowly came across the top of a roof, and she looked up, and she, she could see boxes and pipes and appendages. It was like an Airfix model, if you remember, mm. when we were younger, Chris, you know, all, the, all the components. And the undersending just slowly, with one blinking red light, and flew away off into the sky. Mm.